Our programs include many languages. Please log on to our program schedule for more details. SupremeMasterTV.com forward slash schedule. Nos programmes comprennent des émissions en plusieurs langues. Pour de plus amples informations, consultez SupremeMasterTV.com barre oblique schedule. Nasze programy oferują wiele języków. Po dalsze informacje prosimy odwiedzić harmonogram naszych programów na suprememastertv.com ukośnik schedule. It was soul destroying, that's how it felt. But wanting to keep the farm working as a farm. I just needed to keep doing it until I could find what else to do. It became clear that we really have to find a solution and to get out of cattle farming. 73 Cows, winner of Best Overall Film and Best Lifestyle Film at the world's very first international vegan film festival. Watch on to find out more. Greetings, spirited viewers. I am Minh Thing from the sweet country of Ao Lac, also known as Vietnam. The graceful Ao Lacsi's people, thank you for being so kind and open-hearted, and we wish you much joy and fulfillment on your noble path. Welcome to part one of our three-part program, Canada hosts world first international vegan film festival. Today, we travel to the nation's capital, Ottawa, to find out more about this exciting, progressive event. Over the past decade, there has been an influx of insightful documentaries that go in depth about important issues of our modern world. The wide array of films helps to attract viewers in different ways. For example, Earthlings and Dominion awaken our empathy towards animals. Plant Pure Nation and What the Health help the audience understand the detrimental health effects of animal-based diets, while Cowspiracy empowers viewers with knowledge about the relationship between the world's climate and our diets. These three important intertwined issues, climate change, human health, and cruel animal industries became the basis for the world's first vegan film festival. In October 2018, Canada was proud to host the Ottawa International Vegan Film Festival, or OIVFF, featuring documentaries from all over the world that address these fundamental issues and more. The annual festival was the creation of Sean Stratton, a professional speaker, best-selling author, and high-performance vegan athlete. In 2015, after watching several documentaries about the impact of food on our health, Sean, his wife, and their three young daughters decided to adopt the wholesome plant-based lifestyle. Uh, it's about three and a half years for me, so not too long. And I originally uh, jumped on the bandwagon, I guess, with my wife. She was the first person to decide uh, in our family that she wanted to try a plant-based lifestyle. And um, at the time, I think she was battling with some running injuries and had heard that she might uh, be able to recover faster on a plant-based diet and she was willing to try anything at that point and as we watched some more documentaries and got more educated on the on the lifestyle it just made a lot more sense to our family. We first came in with uh, with a health focus, uh, we're, we're a healthy family, we're always looking to optimize our health and, and once you come in uh, you learn more about the animal advocacy and the environmentalism and um, comes you know over overall passion about uh, the whole the whole movement. After experiencing many positive changes, both in himself and his family, Sean wished to share the benefits of going vegan with others. He concluded that the most powerful way to reach people was through the same vehicle which had persuaded him and his family to adopt the compassionate lifestyle, film. Yeah, I really just wanted to showcase 
uh, in some incredible array of vegan films and hopefully have audience leave inspired, educated, um, feeling compassionate with animals and, and excited to continue on with this lifestyle or potentially start you know, a plant-based lifestyle. Realizing that organizing an international vegan film festival was a massive undertaking, Sean reached out to his local community for assistance. The response was immediate and positive. Many people volunteered to help, and the National Capital Vegetarian Association agreed to financially support the event. Sean then sent out a request to filmmakers from all around the world, asking for vegan films. He was delighted by the response. We had 29 submissions from eight countries, totaling over 17 hours of films. Yeah. And how did you decide which ones to show? Uh, a lot of it went through the jury. Uh, once I saw the jury's kind of scoring, uh, that determined kind of the, you know, the top rated films, but also the timing of the films. Uh, so it was a combination of you know, shorter films and even we did a section of a feature film today. Uh, but obviously we wanted to show the top rated films that would fit our time slot. You know, I'm thrilled that we got a great turnout of vegan films submitted in, in overall. You know, when we started this, we didn't know we were going to get five or ten or, or two films come in. And, and having such a diverse group of films uh, to, to choose from, uh, that, that made me very happy, obviously. And then just working with our committee and our jury to, to put this festival together, is, uh, it's a great group of people to work with. And it's fantastic to see it come to fruition today. Gentle viewers, let's enjoy a cup of organic vegan fruit smoothie and breathe in the fresh air for a moment. We'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Canada Hosts World's First International Vegan Film Festival, part one of three. After extensive planning, the day of the Ottawa International Vegan Film Festival finally arrived. Long before the event even started, enthusiastic guests began forming a long queue in front of the doors of the Mayfair Theatre. Well, my sister is a vegan and has been for a couple of years and uh, I was spending some time with her today and I figured that I would come check out the uh, film festival. I love, uh, I love animals and I love film and I love the Mayfair. This is my favorite theater, so I think a combination of all those factors brought me here. Uh, being vegan, uh, I just wanted to have more information. Um, I'm interested in the vegan uh, diet and um, I thought maybe I'd learn something about what to eat. <laughs> so I heard about this on Facebook and I was really interested because I love the community and so I decided to come out here and I decided to volunteer and get my time and bring people so it's been good so far. The festival proved to be an awesome event and the films touched the hearts of those in attendance. As its grand finale, the OVIFF presented awards for the best of category films in five different areas. Best overall film, best lifestyle film, best animal welfare film, best health and nutrition film, and best environmental film. The awards for both the best overall film and best lifestyle film went to the British documentary, 73 Cows. 73 Cows is a touching, true story about a farmer named Jay Wild and his wife Katja as they undergo the remarkable transition from raising cattle for slaughter to growing organic fruits and vegetables. Directed by Alex Lockwood, the film provides snippets from the couple's journey. Jay had been a cattle farmer all his life, as had his father before him. But as the years passed, he began to feel more and more aware of his personal ethical dilemma. While raising his cows, he began to see how intelligent and kind they are, and how each one has his or her own personality. He grew to see them as friends. Later, when he took one of his cows to be slaughtered, he felt he was betraying her. But getting out of what he had done all his life was not easy.
it was soul destroying, that's how it felt. But wanting to keep the farm working as a farm, I just needed to keep doing it until I could find what else to do. It became clear that we really have to find a solution and to get out of cattle farming. Produced with no budget by a talented team of only four, 73 Cows won the hearts of the OIVFF jury, who stated, 73 Cows is a beautiful and moving film that traces Jay's journey through the changes he never expected. It is an exquisite meditation about the bond between man and beast, and a profound portrait of a man awakening to the call of conscience, compassion, and courage. For more information on 73 cows, please visit lockwoodfilm.com forward slash 59 cows. Welcome to part two of our three-part program, Canada hosts world's first international vegan film festival. Today, let's explore more amazing films from this pioneering event, which took place in Ottawa, the nation's capital. Over the past decade, there has been an influx of insightful documentaries that go in depth about important issues of our modern world. The wide array of films helps to attract viewers in different ways. For example, Earthlings and Dominion awaken our empathy towards animals. Plant Pure Nation and What the Health help the audience understand the detrimental health effects of animal-based diets while Cowspiracy empowers viewers with knowledge about the relationship between the world's climate and our diets. These three important intertwined issues, climate change, human health, and cruel animal industries, became the basis for the world's first vegan film festival. In October 2018, Canada was proud to host the Ottawa International Vegan Film Festival, or OIVFF, featuring documentaries from all over the world that address these fundamental issues and more. The festival proved to be an awesome event and the films touched the hearts of those in attendance. As its grand finale, the OVIFF presented awards for the best of category films in five different areas. Best overall film, best lifestyle film, best animal advocacy film, best health and nutrition film, and best environmental film. The OIVFF award for Best Animal Advocacy showcased some of the painful cruelty behind the meat industry. Although the subject matter is very difficult to watch, these documentaries have a powerful impact and play an important role in awakening people to the horrors of the abusive meat industry. It was um, an inside perspective of a slaughterhouse, essentially. Um, and, I mean, obviously that's really difficult subject matter to, um, to approach. And especially seeing it, um, you know, it really drives home the meat you're presented with as a product, right? It's displayed to you as a product, but in reality, it did come from an animal, and um, there's a whole process that goes behind that. And uh, it was just very upsetting, but it gets you thinking about where your food really comes from and the, the consequences of your actions. You think you might go vegan in the future? Yeah, I think it's definitely a possibility at this point. Delightful viewers, we will go out to enjoy the sunshine for a while and we'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Canada Hosts World's First International Vegan Film Festival, part two of three.
The winning film in the Best Animal Advocacy category was Promises, a Danish documentary which follows the compassionate film director Jan Sorgenfrey and Shining World Compassion Award recipient and photographer Joe Ann MacArthur as they investigate the industrial chicken industry. Let us now take a look at this short but profound film. These woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Tonight, the investigation team and I have set out to document one of the secrets of factory farming. The images I'll shoot tonight will haunt me for months to come, but they hold the key to helping millions of animals. Like a blanket, the darkness enfolds me. I breathe in the crisp air and look up at the moon. These surroundings calm me. They sharpen my senses as they've done so many nights before. Every investigator knows that nightmares are not born of darkness. They emerge under industrial fluorescent lights. This is how modern day chickens are raised. The barn feels more like a field of chickens. And in here, they're treated much like crops. These animals have been bred to grow so fast that their hearts and legs can hardly keep up with the pressure from their bulking bodies. She starts to nod off a little bit when we're quiet. And she's got a badly um, paralyzed or injured leg. So she uh, pushes herself around, flaps around, but she can't really walk anymore. I'm so sorry. I wonder how these chickens will react once they realize I mean no harm. I stop shooting, sit down, and put my camera on the ground. At first, they're still cautious, but soon the bolder birds start to get closer. They're curious. Soon I find myself surrounded by a sea of chickens. I'm covered in chickens right now. <laughs> they're clambering to get up here. There's tens of thousands of birds in here, but, you know, if these guys were at Farm Sanctuary or at any sanctuary, they would have a name. And it's just so different here. Here they're not individuals. I always had a love and a concern for animals, but I was in my 20s before my relation to chickens changed. My mom had pet chickens at home, and I fell in love with their charming ways and their quirks. But at the same time, I was eating chicken for dinner. I was quick to realize that these animals were no different from the dogs and other animals I so adored. I made a promise to animals then, one that I keep to this day, that I wouldn't harm them, that I'd use my camera to tell their stories and that I'd never turn away. This chicken has never been pet before and she loves it. I mean, chickens just love this. She's settling down onto my hands. She's starting to preen herself now because she likes what I'm doing so much. Look at this, she's settling into my hand because it's warm, she's happy. Yes, yes, I like you too. I know that you're sweet. I mean, she's sitting in my hands. I'm feeling her little heartbeat. <laughs> As dawn approaches, our time here is running out. It's time to leave. The stinging pain in my chest never lets me down. I get to leave. They don't. Keeping people in the dark enables this industry to exist without scrutiny. Photography is my contribution. My way of shining a light in that darkness my way of creating change, my promise. You too can make a promise to not cause harm, to look, to really see, and to never turn away. The Cinematography by Noel Vincent promises is a poignant wake-up call of the unnecessary atrocities that our sweet, intelligent chicken co-inhabitants are subjected to because of animal farming.
The touching, eye-opening documentary moves the audience to choose more compassionate vegan lifestyles. For more information on We Animals and Joanne's photography, please visit weanimals.org. I really went from plant-based to vegan once I saw and started making that connection, and now I can no longer disconnect. So once I see meat, I see an animal, and so once I see stuff like that on the film of the chickens being slaughtered, it makes me cry. I cried in there, and but that empowers me, and that's why I do this, is for the animals. Welcome to the third and final part of our program. Canada hosts world's first international vegan film festival. Today, let's explore more amazing films from this event, which took place in Ottawa, the nation's capital. Over the past decade, there has been an influx of insightful documentaries that go in-depth about important issues of our modern world. The wide array of films helps to attract viewers in different ways. For example, Earthlings and Dominion awaken our empathy towards animals. Plant Pure Nation and What the Health help the audience understand the detrimental health effects of animal-based diets. While Cowspiracy empowers viewers with knowledge about the relationship between the world's climate and our diets. These three important intertwined issues, climate change, human health, and cruel animal industries became the basis for the world's first vegan film festival. In October 2018, Canada was proud to host the Ottawa International Vegan Film Festival or OIVFF, featuring documentaries from all over the world that address these fundamental issues and more. The festival proved to be an awesome event, and the films touched the hearts of those in attendance. As its grand finale, the OIVFF presented awards for the best of category films in five different areas, best overall film, best lifestyle film, Best Animal Advocacy Film, Best Health and Nutrition Film, and Best Environmental Film. As the vegan population grows worldwide, people are choosing the compassionate plant-based lifestyle for many reasons. One of them is to improve their personal health. Currently, half of the adults in the USA suffer with chronic health issues, such as cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, arthritis, or Alzheimer's disease. Research has shown that a healthy plant-based lifestyle can not only prevent, but also reverse many of these diseases. The OIVFF winner for best health and nutrition film was the documentary Eating You Alive. Let's demystify this notion that if you are a plant-based eater, you are giving up everything. If food tastes good, food tastes good, regardless of what it's made of. It clicked. I thought, this is something that I can do. So I went into my practice, and I took my prescription pad out, and instead of writing medications, I would write a recipe for a smoothie for breakfast. I just want to be healthy. When you're eating good quality, unprocessed, organic, whole foods, there's no way you can do it wrong. I am healthier now than I've been in my whole life. I realized that here I was in control all along. The vegetables and the fruits and the whole grains and the beans, those foods have power that you never imagined. It's time to put it to work. One participant at the International Vegan Film Festival shared his own remarkable health improvements since adopting a plant-based lifestyle. I'm 61 years old, I became vegan at 60. A friend of mine convinced me to change. I thank her very much. And um, my health is much better. I, I lost 35 pounds, I, I feel much better. My arms, 
my fingers, my legs. Uh, my health is much better, and I know it's much better. Eating meat, I know it was bad, but I didn't know it was that bad. Now I know how bad it is after being vegan since, since December 2017. I've improved my health, I've improved my life much better. Wow, fantastic to hear about such wonderful improvements in your well-being. Let us take a moment to thank heaven for all the bountiful and delicious vegan foods which bring us excellent health. We will be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our program. Canada hosts the world's first international vegan film festival. Many people adopt a vegan lifestyle because they care about and want to preserve our precious environment. I've been an environmentalist my entire life and I saw someone with a sign and I went up to them and I was like, 50% of greenhouse gases are from animal agriculture, that can't be right. And someone asked me, do you eat meat? I said, yes. And they said, do you eat dairy? I said, yes. And I'm like, you call yourself an environmentalist? And I said, yes. And they said, you're a hypocrite. And after that, my entire life changed. I went vegetarian, and then after watching and seeing the impact of the dairy industry, I went vegan, and the best decision of my entire life. I am so happy, I am so healthy, I love everything. One delightful entry in the OIVFF was Evan's video about climate change, a cartoon-style documentary narrated by renowned seven-year-old vegan activist Evan Lefevre, better known as Vegan Evan. This documentary was co-directed by Ray Kawachuk, a senior video project editor and filmmaker from Toronto, Canada. We have a film in the film festival called Evan's Video About Climate Change. It really comes across as a third grade climate change presentation, but I think it gets very deep and I think it's anybody could have some takeaway from this film. Let's have a look at this delightful short documentary, Evan's video about climate change. Hi, my name is Evan, and this is my video about climate change. Everything you need to know about climate change, you already learned back in school. It's pretty simple, actually. Energy from the sun warms the earth, and as the earth warms up, heat rises from the earth up into the sky. Some gases in the atmosphere trap some of the heat. These are called greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases radiate heat back down to Earth. The more greenhouse gases in the sky, the warmer it gets on Earth. This is called the greenhouse effect. Our forests, soils, and oceans help balance the greenhouse effect. The forests soils and oceans absorb the greenhouse gases. Normally, they help keep Earth at an average comfy temperature of about 60 degrees. It's a good thing for all life on Earth. But our forests, soils, and oceans are being destroyed. Humans have now cleared over half the forests on Earth. Most of that land is now used to graze farm animals and grow feed crops for farm animals. About 60% of all land now used by humans is used to farm animals for food. Graze lands and feed crops destroy the soils. Just like the forests, we've ruined half the soils on Earth too. The loss of forests and soils means more greenhouse gases stay up in the sky. More greenhouse gases in the sky means more heat on Earth. Scientists call this global warming. And global warming is causing climate change. Superstorms, floods, and wildfires are way worse now. The polar ice sheets are melting and sea waters are rising. 
It's all getting worse and worse, faster and faster. All life on Earth is in danger now. Scientists call it the sixth great mass extinction of a species on Earth. We're now losing up to 200 species of wildlife every day. I'm scared and I'm sad. What will the world be like when I grow up? We have to fix all this ourselves and we can do it. It's not complicated. Greenhouse gases are not the only cause of climate change. Climate change is caused by two things. Number one, the increase in greenhouse gases. Plus, number two, the loss of our forests and soils. In a 10 year time frame, farming animals for food is the number one cause of greenhouse gases. And get this, if just half the land now used to farm animals was returned to native forests, the restored forests and soils would draw down more greenhouse gases than humans have put into the atmosphere for the past 250 years. That's huge! This would not only stop climate change, it would reverse it. Eating animals is the number one cause of climate change. Eating animals is the number one cause of all the wildlife going extinct. And eating animals is also the number one cause of animal cruelty. This is why I switched to a vegan diet. It's good for the animals, it's good for the earth, and it's good for us. It's the only way to fix climate change before it's too late. And it's the only way to stop wildlife from going extinct. So please, share my video. Go vegan and help save the animals and save the earth. Thank you. For more information on Evan's video about climate change, please visit SaveTheAnimalsSaveTheEarth.com. So it expresses a, an importance that we don't need to wait for all the uh, government policies that will fight climate change. Those are still important, but we can start today with our own diets. And we don't need government permission in order to do that. So uh, that's the best thing that you can do. I love how uh, people respond to it because uh, Evan's got a, a very uh, fresh attitude to... Uh, to activism and uh, I think people really engage with it in ways that they may not uh, if it was an adult delivering the message. They're able to look at it as if, and, and try to imagine themselves as a seven-year-old approaching this issue and it's so much more pure and so much more um, something that, that you tap into that, that part of yourself, that, that uh, childlike wonder. Now that the film festival has ended, how does Sean feel about the overall event? It was fantastic, yeah. We had a great turnout today. I was really impressed. I had lots of good questions in the last couple of days leading up to the, the festival. There was a lot of uh, curiosity and intrigue. And I had a great group of volunteers. We had a great volunteer committee and uh, people were very enthusiastic and, and looking to help in any way. So what does the future hold for the International Vegan Film Festival? I think the, uh, the, the sky's the limit. Uh, I look forward to taking this uh, action-packed festival that we've uh, captured here today and, and taken on tour and, and go to some other cities across uh, Canada, across the U.S. And, and around the world. And I'm already in talk with uh, several other uh, folks that are interested in having it come their their location and uh, look forward uh, to having it uh, go on tour probably in early uh, 2019. For more information on the Ottawa International Vegan Film Festival, please visit OIVFF.com. Sean Stratton, organizers and volunteers, thank you for your diligent efforts and enthusiasm to share the benefits of the plant-based lifestyle. With such compassionate and effective endeavors as yours, our world will surely herald a vegan age, and this wonderful film festival is proof of that. We wish you every success in your future endeavors.
loving viewers, it was a pleasure having your kind-hearted company for today's Canada hosts world's first international vegan film festival, part three of three. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Andrea and Matthias Opperman, Systemic Counseling for Humans and Animals, part one of two. Up next, right after Noteworthy News. May you enjoy abundant blessings and grow each day in love and understanding so that we may soon all enjoy world vegan, world peace. For more details and to check out our schedule for language availability, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash cs and suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Pour plus d'informations et pour consulter le programme des langues disponibles, visitez suprememastertv.com baroblique cs et suprememastertv.com baroblique schedule. 查询节目表有哪些语言，请参访以下网址，请参访 Supreme Master TV com 斜线 cs 以及 Supreme Master TV com 斜线 schedule。